Transparency Academy has uh, an objective of unlocking the Tanzania Urban Resilience Program to the future. The Resilience Academy started really as a, a concept to build capacity and, and long-term sustainability for new tools and methods in urban development and urban climate risk management in African cities, which are growing extremely fast and as a result prone to uh, flooding because of the pace of growth in the floodplains, because of the changing environment leading to more sedimentation and erosion, and because of the changing climate. Traditional methods can't keep up with the pace of growth that African cities experience. So the urban resilience challenge requires us to innovate, to think differently, and to accelerate a transition to new tools and methods that are fit for the African context. How do we include the voice of local people? How do we make that digital and geotag it and put it on the map? The best way is through a university, the partnership in universities, whereby the universities now can impact this uh, knowledge about risks uh, management to the future urban planners. One of the key features of the Resilience Academy is a sort of mass internship opportunity. Real world problems with real experiences for university students. Young people are very important. It is easier to instill or to embed these skills and knowledge to the younger generation. Students also benefit in their studies because uh, most of these methodologies and uh, theories, they're also part of their studies. So they actually get uh, an extra advantage of applying what they learn in actually in real life. First, we were working household to household and asking people questions. Uh, are, they, are they expressing floods? This data you give to us will be helpful, especially for the production of maps. It helps the city planners or the government agencies who are engaged in, in disaster management to, to make decisions on what to do, whether to improve infrastructure or to improve the drainage system for those people who are prone to flood. As you see, the kind of the nature of the city have mountains and hills, so we are facing log falls for some times. Now we are mapping the city. We're using some odd case and open map kits. We are able to identify the challenges which face the communities. The gathering this information will be more helpful because even the Mwanza Council will able to use this information to solve the problem according to the map show. We are learning about uh, tree mapping and canop mapping. As for canop mapping, we have it practical through online where we are mapping the areas where we identify canopies. On the side of uh, tree mapping, we are trying to learn how we can collect data as pertaining trees. So as we're collecting this data, it will enhance or it will bring about knowing how we can further protect what we have, or if not, we can bring more. Here we are doing surveying of ground control point. The drone pictures, when they were taken, they are just pictures. So in order to use it in our purpose, we have to re to orient those pictures to the ground using this ground control point. Uh, for this equipment, it ranges from uh, $400 to $500. Uh, but when you go to normal surveying equipment, which you, uh, surveyors buy, it ranges uh, from $10,000 to $20,000, which is very, very, very expensive uh, tool. Most of the area which have been affected by the flood have not been mapped. But through this, it will be very easy for us to, to purchase, to buy, and to, to, to do MIP. The infrastructure is one among the problems that facing all the challenging tourism activities in Zanzibar. Tourism is very, very important in Zanzibar because it provides about 27% of GDP. That's why we say 
Zanzibar without tourism is nothing. Tourism activities have been affected much by Corona or COVID-19. I use this GPS receiver so as to collect data. For example, I take some point in the hotel, bungalows and the restaurant. And also I take some track on the roads. This information will be used so as to, to easier getting information about tourism activities. That is the first. And also will help even the community to use this information to understand their area about tourism activities and how they can get services and where. All society will benefit from this project. So what Resilience Academy has evolved into is not just the sustainability for future generations of surveyors and planners and disaster management specialists in African cities, but also in fact a partner to the innovation and research process of testing, deploying and developing low-cost, low-complexity digital solutions to these urban challenges. I think our students are really excited because now they get to get their hands on real issues. Now they get to apply what they learn in actually real life. And it's, it's a very good feeling when you see that you have made an impact to their society.